good Wednesday morning, everybody. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm not in the truck trucking today, so that's kind of disappointing, but we are getting stuff done. I have a doctor's appointment, an MRI scheduled for this afternoon. The place in Manitoba where we get our MRIs done, at least here in Southern Health, is in Winkler, between Winkler and Morden. It's called Boundary Trails Medical Center or something like that, Boundary Trails Hospital. It's an hour and a half to two hour drive from where I am in Steinbeck. It's a bit of a hike to go out there. So I'm on my way there right now. Uh, this morning, I opened up our PO address, our new PO address, which is uh, for the channel. A lot of you have been uh, asking about that. I finally got it set up. Uh, the address is listed down below my videos now. You gotta scroll down to the bottom of the description. Uh, somewhere in the middle there near the bottom, there's a PO address. Got that set up this morning. I did some blood work this morning. I went and uh, had some more blood taken from me. And this is all to do with uh, my own personal health issues. This isn't anything to do with our fertility journey. Uh, this is actually to do with uh, what's going on in my back on my side, which I don't think is too serious, but we're going to double check everything to make sure it's not and kind of figure out what's going on. I talked about this a little while ago, right? It feels like I sort of have a little bit of a lump in there. Sometimes it gets very painful. Sometimes I don't notice it. They want to check to make sure everything is good. So that's what the MRI is all about today. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. On our way to Vancouver, Yonzi, the other side. The other side of the river. George's Burgers. They have a George's Burgers in Morris. Huh. Morris, Manitoba. Right here, we're just turned on to, what is this, Highway 23 or something? I don't know. This takes me uh, all the way up to what I believe is Highway 3. This is Yonzeed. I'm not nearly as familiar with this side of the river as I am on the other side of the river. I'm from the, the deep seat. This side. But I mean, if you ask people on this side of the river, they, they argue with you and they say, this is Dietzit and I live in Yonzit. Boundary Trails Health Center. I'm guessing I just park out this way. I'm gonna park right over there, right in the corner. Right over here. I should be safe here. Beautiful. I've never had an MRI before. Should I be nervous? <laughs> I, uh, I hear that it could be kind of claustrophobic -y. And I gotta make sure I wear like no metal in there. I gotta wear like a hospital gown. I'm not really nervous. I mean, they know what they're doing. They're the professionals, right? I am a professional driver. When it comes to transporting your goods from point A to point B, you can count on me. When it comes to doing MRIs, I'm gonna count on the professionals in there that have done it countless times, so. Yes, we'll see. I saw an, I saw an RCMP vehicle there by the entrance before. Wonder what the cops are doing here. Just making sure nobody gets out of line. I guess. Well, then, then again, cops go visit the hospital all the time. I guess if they arrest someone, or, or um, if there's a domestic dispute or uh, a case of abuse, right? They have to go to the hospital to create a police report or something. I'm not a cop. I don't know. I'm a trucker. Okay, I'm putting things off. All right, 15 minutes to get in there. They told me specifically, Trucker Josh. Don't be early, okay? Be on time. 
But on time means something different to different people. On time usually means about 10 minutes early, right? I mean, if you're on time, you're late. Maybe that's just in the trucking world. If they want you there at 4.30 and you show up there at 4.30, you're late. Usually if they want you there at 4.30, you gotta be there by like 4.15. Then you're on time. I'm going in. I don't know, let's see what happens. <laughs> Guess we're all ready for our MRI. Wish me luck. That was actually pretty relaxing. Have any of you ever had an MRI before? It's sort of shoved into this little tube. Very noisy tube. They give you earplugs and headphones. It's still pretty noisy. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> it was actually pretty relaxing. I thought the small space might bother me, but apparently I'm not claustrophobic. Not at all. So I guess uh, they were checking out something about my spine. I don't even know. I don't know what the doctor's looking for, but I hope, I hope he either found what he was looking for or that he didn't find what he was looking for. Depending on what he was looking for. I have no idea. He didn't tell me. They just scheduled me for an MRI. And I got my appointment time and here I am. I mean, no news is good news, right? Ah, yes! Whew! And that's why we got these, uh... Telephone poles all decorated up like that, right? It's usually for an airport, but that's probably for the STARS helicopter ambulance that would land here. I don't know where the helipad is. Probably on the roof, maybe? Yeah, they got all those little things there so that the pilots know where the hydro lines are. Oh yeah, they got the little sock, wind sock over there. So I'm guessing that's the helipad right there. That would be a pretty good job to land, I think. Pun intended. I didn't even know I was making a pun, but hey, thought of it as I was saying it. It'd be pretty good to land a job of a helicopter pilot. I mean, you're probably home, you're, you're, I'm guessing you're home most nights. You just fly around the province get to see the world from in the sky and you probably get paid pretty well too I'm assuming I mean, maybe I should maybe I should get my helicopter pilot's license or I could just stay trucking too I'd probably do that I love trucking too much to do anything else but it would be cool to have my I want to get my pilot's license one day yet but not my helicopter it's my regular private license for uh, pilots I'd love to be able to uh, fly around. I got a quarter way through my private license flying uh, several years ago. I got to go and finish my training. I'm probably going to start all over by this point. But uh, one day, that is one of my goals yet, is to get my private license. And maybe I'll upgrade it to my commercial license so I can make some money. Maybe when I'm not trucking. I wouldn't mind doing some crop dusting. I think that would be a pretty good job. I know that pays really well. You can make a whole year's salary in just the few months where you got to... Uh, uh, spray the crops right and in those months when you're not spraying crops well you can fly tourists up north to do some northern fishing before all this pandemic started there was a lot of americans that would come up here to canada and then fly with private pilots like on float planes up north to these secluded lakes where they would get the ultimate fishing experience right and a lot of americans with money they could hire a pilot they'd fly them up there they go to their private cottage or whatever they got up there and you as the pilot you can either fly home for the week or you can hang out there do your own thing for however long they're there depending on how long they're there and then when they're ready to go home you just fly them back to winnipeg and then from winnipeg they fly home to the states wherever they go that was a huge thing i don't know how big it is now but uh i mean fishing is a big deal up here in canada and americans will pay big money to come up here and make use of our lakes to do some fishing so I always thought that'd be a pretty cool job to have fly them up there. Get to meet a lot of cool people that way too, right? But alas, here we are. Trucking. And going to the hospital. 
I don't know why I have to come all the way to Winkler to uh, do an MRI. I guess this is like the only MRI machine we have. Probably because I'm in Southern Health. They probably have another MRI machine in Winnipeg at the Health Science Center. I would assume they have one there. But since I'm from the health, south, Southern Health region of our province, this is probably where the only MRI machine is located. It's, I don't know. What do I know? What do I know? I don't do what I'm told. Doctor says, hey, go, go jump in this tube. Go get an MRI. It's pretty much what it is. You're just jump like getting shoved into this little tube. A noisy tube. Whatever. Whatever you want me to do, just tell me that I'm okay. Or if tell me if there's something wrong and tell me what we can do to fix it. Oh yeah, there's the helipad right there. Around there. Okay. Oh, and I've got an ambulance coming up behind me now. People live right here too. They probably hear those ambulance sirens all the time. I guess you get used to them after a while. Well, I think we figured out where that ambulance was going. We're at a dead stop here on the highway. This is Highway 14 eastbound. And uh, I see flashing emergency lights up towards the front there at police, fire is probably where the ambulance is as well. I'm guessing that this is probably a. Uh, an accident scene. I hope everybody's okay. Well, as usual, several people got impatient and uh, drove past all of all of us here waiting on the shoulder, and uh, got hung up, I guess, up front here, and blocked. And now they're blocking the shoulder so that the emergency vehicles can't get through to the accident scene. Oh, I see. See, they had to get traffic control set up because this side of the highway is blocked off. And uh, they had to get people over there stopping traffic from that direction so that traffic from this direction can go that direction in the wrong lane that is supposed to be going the other direction. I hope everyone was okay, but man, judging by this mess... Ooh, that car there on the right. Ooh. Oh, and there's a big truck involved. Oh, yeah. Looks like he got rear-ended. Someone rear-ended this guy. He is based out of Ontario. Okay. So what it looks like happened here is a big truck cut someone off and got rear-ended unless if he was making a turn and someone didn't realize maybe he wasn't using his turn signals I don't know we can't really judge what happened all we can say for sure is that a tractor trailer unit was headed east on highway 14 and a late model Honda CRV rear-ended him for whatever reason looked like they got rear-ended pretty hard too there's minimal damage to the trailer on the passenger side as expected those trailers aren't going to really uh, buckle underneath the weight of a tiny car like a CRV and the CRV looked pretty smashed up but it looked to the point where the occupants would have probably been okay and are probably going to hospital just as a precaution that's what I'm thinking it looked like they should be okay could have been really bad though whatever happened it's just another reminder to keep your head up on the road. Wiener, I heard you went to go see the good doctor today. Yeah? His eye is a little bit infected. What did the doctor say? Uh, he doesn't have any coronary ulcers, and it's probably just conjunctivitis, so just pink eye. Okay, but so what did they give? They gave me a steroid and uh, antibiotic eye drop, and uh, 
for seven to ten days. We keep putting him in every eight hours. But it already looks better, and he's only had one dose, so. Good. Yep. Falling apart, buddy? He's always falling apart. Purebreds, you know? Well, he's 11 years old now? Uh, almost? Yeah. No. Or no, he'll, almost 12. He'll be 12 in June. Oh. Yeah. The old fart? Mm-hmm. Jakes. All right, so Britt has uh, supper ready here. What is this? Turkey and spinach spaghetti squash. That looks creative. I'm starving. Not Let's for see. you, Diesel. It's not for a weasel. You're getting salmon later. Don't even tease yourself. Go away Go from the down. table. Go lay down. Go lay down. <laughs> Dang it. So Shut your hard life. <laughs> you too, Frank. You're not allowed by the table while we're eating. Go. Go lay down. Go lay down. No. 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 Go to your bed. Go to your bed. Or go to the couch. Go over here. Go somewhere. The rules are not allowed to sit here and beg. Okay, thanks for making supper. Yeah, you're welcome. Look at this. It's my reward for being stuck in a tube. So if you don't know what this is, uh, you're not alone. I don't know what it is either, but it it's smells squash. delicious. So she's got it like shredded in there. That's cool. Sort of like spaghetti. That's why it's called spaghetti squash. Ah, clever. <laughs> clever. See? See? Mmm. That's good. That's really good. Can you eat the whole thing too? Is this all edible? Uh, not the outside peel, no. It's like a pumpkin, but different innards, I guess. Very similar. Okay. We've had this before, except you didn't leave it in the, in the squash. My boss advised me to bake my spaghetti sauce in the squash. Mm. So I decided to try it this time. That's delicious. Have you ever had this before? We've gotten so much snow in our yard this year that we've got little trails <laughs> dug out so that the dogs can get into the yard. Uh, you won't be able to see them now because it's dark out. There goes a wiener. Right. Yeah, I'll have to show you during the day. <laughs> little highways for them to run around on. You can sort of see it along here. Gotta shovel it out again a little bit. <laughs> Got a lot of snow this year. But, yeah, this way the little guys can get around the whole yard. And it's easier for us to get back here too to clean stuff up. But anyways, that's it for today. It's my day off tomorrow, we're back to work. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. One in, he's a... Still missing one. Chevy! Chevy! Come here, bud! There you are. Come on. Time for bed. <laughs>